Hello there, students. By now we've learned some of the most essential parts of Racket, including a significant amount of its base syntax. However, the real heart of Racket is in its ability to represent and handle structured data. Now, Racket's come a long way since its roots, but those roots were in a language named Lisp, which was this radical reimagining of the way that computers worked, along with how languages were designed. You see, when Lisp was created, there really weren't that many higher level or structured languages. Not that, certainly no functional languages out on the block. In fact, the thought of having a higher level programming language or something that required a runtime or a garbage collector was a totally foreign concept that most reasonable people saw as laughable because you had to dedicate so much operation just to managing the ceremony of the language. For example, you have to use a garbage collector. These are things that at the time seemed like they would never come to fruition, but now we use day-to-day -day in computing. Now one of the key ideas in Lisp is the idea that there's a native representation of lists. Lisp itself stands for the list processing language. All right, so let's start digging into cond and also lists. Cond is a form in Racket that allows us to check multiple guards, and then based on the first one that fires, execute some piece of code. So cond begins with the word cond, and then has a set of guards followed by bodies. There can be as many of these as you want, and it can optionally end with the word else, which would be the final guard, and will fire if none of the previous guards have fired. Now it's very important to note that only one of these guards fires at a time. So for example, let's say there's a guard up here where a guard down here would fire. Well, if this guard zero fires, even if guard, would one, uh, guard one would have fired, body one will never get executed. Let's see what I mean by that, by taking this piece of example code right here, going into Dr. Racket. Oops, giving away the answer for later in the lecture, I guess. All right, so we have this function foo of x, and it's going to say cond, under the circumstance that x is equal to 42, we're going to return 1. If that's not the case, then we go down to check the next guard. If x is greater than 0, then we return 2. Else, we return 3. So no matter what happens, this guard right here will get executed. Let's see what happens. So if I do foo of 42, the first one fires. What about foo of 0? The second one fires. What about foo of negative 3? Oh, sorry. When I do foo of 0, the third one fires because the second one is not valid. 0 is not greater than 0. So now let's do foo of... 1. All right, and also I should say there's nothing that prevents you from writing a non-exhaustive cond statement. Although, if nothing fires, then you're going to get very weird results. So let's see what happens when I modify this code like this. Oops. Now if I call foo with negative 3, nothing happens. This is technically the value void in Racket. So forms that should be expressions and don't result in anything implicitly result in the term void. Now you will almost never use this in your day-to-day -day programming, and it's almost always an error to have a match or a con statement that isn't really exhaustive. But this is one thing you should be really careful for. When we start using match statements, which is what I prefer to con, I don't really find myself using con that often. We start using match, you'll start getting errors if your match cases aren't exhaustive. All right, so let's write an example. We have this exercise that says, translate the definition using cond here to satisfy this definition we've got. So let's copy and paste this over into Dr. Racket. This is the function we have to write. It's the absolute value function. We're going to say the absolute value of x is going to be, and then we're going to say cond. When x is greater than 0, it's just going to be x. 
when x is equal to 0, it's going to be 0. could be x as well. What about when um, x is less than 0? Well, then it's going to be negative x. All right, let's run this code. Abs on negative 2, abs on 2, abs on 0. All right, so it looks like it works. Now, I'll say this is a good way to illustrate the use of cond, but I don't really find myself using cond all that often. There are a few times when I like to have multiple things fire, but you'll see I would much prefer to write this definition a little bit more simply. I would just say if x is greater than 0, uh, then just return x, else return minus x. It's not such a big deal to uh, take minus 0, because that's just 0. Oops, except we've got to comment this one out. So I'm going to do a little trick. You can block comment out an entire expression if you do pound and then uh, semicolon. That will comment out the entire block expression or s expression. And now I can do abs negative 2, abs 2, abs 0, so it still works. All right, and that actually dovetails into my next point, which is... Let's say we had the following. So let's say in general that I had cond with some guard g0 and then some corresponding body b0. Then guard g1 and a corresponding body b1 ending in some else. How could I rewrite the above code only to use if? So let's go back to our original definition here. So let's say we want to define abs using only if, except transliterating right from this definition. So if I were a programmer that didn't have access to cond, how could I get the same behavior? Well, what I could do is I could translate it into a sequence of ifs. So I could say, if this is true, then do this body. Otherwise, if this is true, then this body otherwise, and then keep going like that. So I can peel them off one at a time. So I can sort of say, if, and then I can just copy and paste this. And this is quite literally what Racket is doing to implement cond. In fact, cond is one of the most basic examples of a Racket macro that gets translated out to using if. So this is essentially what Racket is doing itself. All right, we're going to say, if x equals 0 body. And then our final case over here is going to be this else case. But we could, uh, we could explicitly encode it if we wanted. Well, here, let's just say it's the else case. So then we'll say it's minus x. And you can sort of see how we could sort of systematically transliterate or transliterate uh, back and forth between cond and if. So in general, I can always get away with just using if, as long as, I, uh, as long as I have access to if, I can always translate cond into if. And this is one of the first examples of uh, macro expansion. So this is a way in which Racket is kind of giving you access to cond, but you, all you really need is the more primitive form. All right, so now let's talk about lists in Racket. To talk about lists, we need to talk about the building block of lists. Every list in Racket is built out of a bunch of different things called con cells. A con cell is just a pair. It has a first element and a second element. I can build con cells in Racket by using the function cons. So if I go into Dr. Racket, I type cons 0, 1, the result is a pair whose left side is 0, and whose right side is 1. Now I can do two things with a pair. I can get its first element, or its left side, and I can get its right element, or its right side. I use the function car to get the left side, and I use the function cutter or kudr, to get the right side. Now, the name of these instructions actually comes from the original implementation of Lisp on the IBM 704. 
I'm happy to link you to some more history of Lisp. There's a lot of interesting history about uh, how Lisp was evolved and how it was implemented on a variety of machines. So let's go through some examples. I can define x to be cons 0, 1. I can define y to be cons 2, 3. I can define z. These are all just pairs. 3, 4. So how do I get the first element of x? Or how do I get the x component of the coordinate xy representation of x? Well, I can do car of x. How do I get the right component of x? Well, I can do the cutter of x. What about the left component of y? Car y. So using con cells, we can actually build out lists. And the reason we can do this is because we can also include one extra special element. We're also going to have the empty list. There's going to be a dedicated symbol that looks like this. This is how the empty list is written in Racket. We can also, sometimes we'll call it null. In other languages, use the word null for a variety of reasons. So I try to avoid confusion, and I'll often try to just say the empty list and write it as the first style. That's kind of how I know it. Now, in Racket, a list is one of two things. It's either the special empty list, or it's a con cell whose left element is some head element of the list, or first element of the list, and whose cutter is the rest of the list. Now, there are a whole bunch of different ways to build lists in Racket. I'm going to just teach you two today, and then we're going to see some other ones later on. So the first is that you can use the variadic function list. If you give lists a number of arguments, it will construct a list for you with those arguments. It's just a normal function. There's nothing special about it in the same way that plus and minus are just normal functions. The next one is that you can explicitly write the lists out using this tag datum representation. So let's see an example of that. If I just type in list one, two, three, what racket spits out to me is tick and then list one, two, three. This quoted data tells me that this is a list data in Racket. So this is what Racket represents lists as. Now there are three operations I can perform on lists. Now remember I said before, lists are one of two things. They're either a con cell containing a head and a tail, or they're the special empty list. And it's one of those two things, it's not both. So we can check if the list is empty, huh? If it's not empty, huh, then we know it has to be a con cell, in which case we can either use car to get the first, we can also use the first function if it's a list. Now if we know it's a list, so it's not empty, huh, we can also use the function rest or cutter to get the rest of the list. All right, so let's look at some examples of basic lists in Racket. Let's define LST to be list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I can print out LST. And I can check, is LST empty, huh? Well, it's not. There's some elements in it. So then I can do car LST, and I get 1. Or I can do cutter of LST, and I get 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so how could I get the second element of LST? Well, I've just seen the cutter of LST is the sublist 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I wanted to get the second element of LST, what I could do is I could do the car of the cutter. So I could do car of cutter of LST. This is the same as a built-in function, catter. Now, there are a variety of these functions, cutter, 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 but they're all variations of these different things. They're sort of, def uh, Racket defines a bunch of built-in ones, but I never really remember them. I just kind of know they exist. So how could we then get the third element? Well, you could do car of the cutter of the cutter. And that would give you three, and so on and so forth. 
Now there are a bunch of basic operations we can define on lists, and we'll start to see that one of the main uses of lists is to define recursive definitions of functions. It's going to be one of the most basic uses of recursion, is being able to do simple operations over lists. And that's going to be a big focus of a few lectures from now. But for now, I'm just going to give you some basic utility functions that are going to help you day to day using lists. You should eventually learn how to actually implement all of these yourself. In fact, they're all fairly trivial functions that we're going to be implementing in the next few lectures. But it's important to know that they exist for now, and you should go ahead and play around with them and see what they do. So the first one is the function length, which will just calculate the length of the list. So if I go to length of LST, it gives me 5. The second is list ref li, which gets the ith element of the list. So if I go to list ref 3 LST, oops, looks like I got the arguments backwards. LST and 3. Then it gives me 4. Append L0 to L1 allows me to append two lists together. So I can do append of LST to 6, 7, 8. And I'll get the entire list of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which was LST, and then the appended 6, 7, 8. I can also do reverse, which will reverse the list. So here I can go to reverse LST. And then finally I can do member to check if some element is in a list. Member. Now notice, Racket's already biting me in some ways. Racket is untyped, and so when I use things in the wrong order, I can occasionally just get the wrong result. Now Racket will tell me precisely where some element is in the list, as long as it actually is in the list. But in the case that the element isn't in the list, it will return false. So let's see an example of that. Here it returns false because 23 isn't in the list. All right, so that's pretty much all the functions we need on lists. Let's wrap this up by tying things together using cond to write a function that takes a list L along with an index X and then returns the first element if the, list, uh, if the element X is 0, the second if X is equal to 1, the third if X is equal to 2, or otherwise return the value tick unknown. Let's see. So now we're going to say cond, if x is equal to 0, then we're going to return car of l, since that's the first element of l. If x is equal to 1, we're going to return car of the cutter of l, because we can get the first of the rest of l. Otherwise, if it's equal to 2, we can do the car of the cutter of the cutter of l. Then I can say else return unknown. Oops, we'll just call this bar. All right, so let's test it out. Zero, one, two, three, element zero. Let's get element one. and then element two, and then element three. All right, so that's our introduction to lists. In the next lectures, we'll be talking about how to use recursion to actually perform interesting operations over lists.